Hello, and no, this isn't a new iPhone. <laughs> it's an iPhone 13 Pro Max running the public beta version of iOS 16. Now the software is out for all to try, though we recommend checking it out on something other than your main device. iOS 16 brings big additions like a customizable lock screen, the ability to edit or delete sent messages, as well as a slew of useful improvements and tweaks. Today, I wanna to go over some of my favorite iOS 16 features that you can actually try right now with the public beta. Now, some of these were previewed during WWDC, Apple's developers conference, while others are things that we found and, well, just really liked. The final version of iOS 16 will be out this fall, but if you can't wait until then, join me as we go over the public beta version of iOS 16. Let's start with messages. There's two features I wanna talk about. The first is the ability to edit a sent message. All I do is tap and hold on the message, a menu pops up and I tap the edit button and then I can correct the word that I mistype and hit the check mark there and it's fixed. Notice it says edited under the message next to delivered. The other neat feature in messages is the ability to undo send, to recall the message that you sent to someone. Maybe you didn't mean to send it to them or you weren't finished composing it. So in this case, I have a message I sent to my mom. I accidentally sent it to my friend Jessica. So I'm gonna tap and hold on that message. You can see there is the ability to undo send and it removes that. And there's a cool little animation. The undo send feature works within a 15 minute window. Let's move on to the keyboard and there's a neat new addition and that's haptic touch. And that means every time you touch a key on the keyboard, you get a little vibration, a little feedback that you've actually hit that key. To enable that, you go to settings, sound and haptics, tap on keyboard feedback and you have two options, sound and you're gonna turn on haptic. And now as I type, I get a physical feedback for every time I hit the key. Another neat feature on the keyboard is an improvement to dictation. You can now switch seamlessly between dictation and touch typing as you're typing out a message, for example. So I'm gonna turn on dictation. Here I am dictating a message, and when I want to, go back to dictating the message and it picks up seamlessly between the two. I can also add emojis by just describing the emoji, shrug emoji, coffee emoji, poop emoji, and send. Let's move on to probably the biggest feature iOS brings, and that is the ability to customize your home screen. And Apple is not joking when they talk about customizations. There are so many ways you can customize things, everything from the font, the widgets on the home screen, the photos, the animations, all kinds of stuff. So let's get into it. In order to get started on your lock screen, you're going to bring your lock screen up and then tap and hold on it. And it brings it into an edit mode. And you can see I have a few different screens I've already selected here. But if I swipe to the right, it says add new. And I have everything from, I can use my existing photos, I have featured photos from Apple, I have suggested photos from Apple. There's an ability to do photo shuffle where it can rotate photos that I've taken or that are in my photo library and put them on there every hour, every day, once a week, whatever you, you choose. So let's set a new wallpaper. So I'm going to go, let's select the astronomy one. And you can see that I have different options here at the bottom. I have a moon, I have the earth, and what's neat is it rotates the earth to where you're located and puts a little dot on it, so clearly I'm in San Francisco. Um, there's also a smaller version of the earth where you can actually see some stars in the background. There's the, uh, a zoomed in version of the moon. Sadly, it doesn't have your location on the moon. Just kidding, no one's on the moon right now. And um, other things, so I'm gonna pick, I really like this moon one here. And what's neat is anything that has an outline box, you can customize. So 
I can tap on the time here and customize the fonts. Maybe I, I don't want something as bold. Um, I can also customize the color. Maybe I want a different color there. Change what that looks like a little bit. That doesn't look great, good at all. Here, I'm gonna stick with white. I think white looks really good there. And then here you can see there's actually, it because it's moon themed, it shows that there's no moon events going on, but maybe there's a full moon tonight or a harvest moon or something like that. It would notify you right on that lock screen. Then once you have your lock screen customized the way you'd like, you can hit done. And at the bottom, it gives you the option to set as a wallpaper pair. So that means both my home screen and my lock screen would look the same. I can also break it apart so the lock screen has one setting and the home screen has another. I'm gonna set this as a pair. And a neat feature about that is, if you look at the bottom of my lock screen, you can see it says focus. So if I tap on that, I can then link this to a specific focus. So for example, if I have a work focus, I can have a specific lock screen and home screen pair show up when I'm in that mode. If I'm working out, I can have a specific lock screen and home screen pair show up when I work out. One of the neat additions is the clownfish wallpaper here, which if you don't know what that is, on the original iPhone that Steve Jobs showed off, it had clownfish wallpaper. It's a nice throwback to 15 years ago when the iPhone was first announced. And now once you have a few different uh, lock screens, you can actually just push and hold and you can swipe between the different ones you want. So if you wanna switch something up on the fly, here's a lovely photo of a sunset I took. Maybe I want that one, but maybe I'm feeling more like a tree today. Or maybe, you know what, maybe I want some, uh, some cheddar, some mice and cheddar cheese to dominate my lock screen. Another neat addition in something like this, if I go to customize, is I can customize the widgets. So widgets on here are a little bit like Apple Watch complications. They're very simple and they're meant to communicate one or two pieces of information quickly at a glance. Let's say I wanna add a battery widget here. I can add that, you see how that pops up. In order to switch the widgets, you just tap on the widget icon and it brings up a little pop-up menu showing different widgets that are kind of designed for that theme as well as other ones you can add. Here I have a photo of myself and what's neat is this is the default setting, but I can swipe between the different looks here and notice how it crops my head as a foreground object and leaves the background blurred out or stylized. So in this case, I have the Golden Gate Bridge right behind my head. And as I swipe, you can see it's kind of given it like a white diffused look, whereas I am crisp and centered. Here I have a black and white look that actually looks kind of cool. Can't even see that there's a Golden Gate Bridge anymore. Kind of like Carl the Fog came in on my phone. Um, but yeah, you have all these different options here. I think this one actually looks pretty cool. And then when I'm done, I can hit done and it says set as a wallpaper and customize home screen. And now there's a little option when on your home screen called legibility blur. And what this does is right now it's enabled. So it's taking that photo and blurring it out, making it have a soft bouquet. If I tap on this to turn it off, you can see it shows the photo completely. So this would be great if you have a home screen with lots of um, apps on it where it's gonna interfere with the photo. You maybe just wanna have that blurred out. Another thing related to the lock screen is notifications. And notifications gets a nice overhaul as opposed to taking up your entire screen all the time. When you tap to look at notifications, now all of them are corralled at the bottom of your screen. If you swipe up, you can view more of them. If you swipe again, you can expand it to fill more of the screen. But another neat addition is called Live Activities. Right now, there's only two apps that take advantage of them, and they're both Apple apps. One is Apple Music, and one is the Timer. But when Apple showed this off at WWDC, they showed Live Activities being used to track the score of a basketball game or a baseball game, or track the progress of an Uber ride. Let's take a look at how it works. So I'm gonna open up the Clock app. I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes, hit start. Now you can already see timers on your home screen, but here's what it looks like as a live activity. You can see at the bottom here, it has its own interface. It's on top of other notifications, which I can swipe up to view those notifications.
Another app that gets major improvements is the Photos app. And to start off with, there is now a duplicate detection system, AKA if you go into your albums and you scroll down, you'll see that there's one called duplicates. And this will show any photos that you have in your photo app that there are two or more of. For example, there are two of my cat. I can tap the merge button. So I'm gonna hit merge two duplicates. There we go. And I can do this again on all of these here that I'd like. One of my absolute favorite features in all of iOS 16 is in the Photos app. And that's the ability to use visual lookup to separate the foreground from the background. So for example, I have a picture of my cat here. I can tap and hold with her with one finger and you can see how it pulls her out of that photo. Then I can just drag this cutout into another app like Messages and send that. I could also put this into a Photos app and make a collage, all kinds of fun things. Here we have a little Lego figure here. I can grab this guy and I'll just continue <laughs> sending these figures to uh, Jessica here. I can do, what else we got here? Here's a person. I can grab a friend here and drop that in. Another neat feature in Photos, oh, I can't believe I'm gonna say this because I've been wanting this feature for years, is the ability to copy and paste edits from one photo to another. So for example, here's a photo of my friend's dog. I can hit edit and let's say I just want to change a couple things about this photo. Maybe I want to brighten it up a little bit here. Change those highlights a little bit. Up the shadows. Do this. Maybe I want to do something drastic like make it black and white. I can do that. But before I go on, I can go on the top right corner here and tap on the little circle with three dots and it says copy edits. So if I copy edits, hit done, I can now go to another photo. This is taken at right around the same time under the same um, lighting. And I can then tap on this and hit paste edits. And it's gonna apply the same things from that one photo to this. And here's another photo at the same time I took. I'm gonna add paste edits again. With iOS 15, we got the ability for live text. So if I took a photo of something or I could use my camera to capture text that was in the subject matter, and that is really cool. Now in iOS 16, I can do live text with video. So here I have a video. Um, as it's playing, you can see there's a sign in the foreground of the video. If I hit pause on the video, I can now tap and hold on that sign and copy that text. Then there's FaceTime, which gets a couple different upgrades, but there's one I wanna focus on, and that's the ability to have live captions during a FaceTime call. So in this case, I'm gonna call my friend Jessica. Hi. Hi. On the top right side, I'm gonna tap the, the letter I, and you see a menu pops up, and one of those options on there says live captions beta. I'm gonna turn that on, and now I'm gonna be quiet. As Jessica talks, everything she's saying is being captioned live on the screen here. It wouldn't be an iOS update without new additions to Memoji, and there's new types of Memojis, there's new sticker poses, as well as new customizations. One of the neat things is new sticker poses. So we have all the, the basic ones at the top here, but now we have some new ones like Chef's Kiss, we also have <laughs> blowing my nose, which is really funny. Yawning. We have actually quite a bit of new stickers here. In mail, there's one feature I wanna highlight, and that's the ability to schedule a message send for later. So here I have a message composed. If I tap and hold on the send arrow, it brings up a small menu saying send now send 9 p.m. tonight, send 8 a.m. tomorrow, send later, and I can pick out, may I wanna do this on July 22nd, and I wanna do it at 1.13 1, p.m. Los Angeles time. And there we go. It's scheduled to be sent. And let me see if that what that looks like. So you can see there's now a send later mailbox folder, and there's that message. 
And the last thing I want to talk about is lockdown mode. And this is for if you are ever the target of a sophisticated cyber attack, turning this mode on will lock down your phone. And you can find it under settings, privacy and security. And you guys go all the way to the bottom and you'll see under a new security section, it says lockdown mode. If I tap on that, when the iPhone is in lockdown mode, it will not function as it typically does. Apps, websites, and features will be strictly limited for security and some experiences will be completely unavailable. So if I tap on, turn on lockdown mode, and again, it shows me everything that's gonna get locked down. That's my messages, my FaceTime, my web browsing, my shared photo albums, device connections, Apple services and profiles. And I would just tap that to enable lockdown mode. And now I wanna hear from you. Are you trying out the public beta for iOS 16? If so, what are your favorite features? We'd love to hear them. Also, we're doing these videos about Apple stuff every week. Let us know what you wanna see us cover. Lastly, do all the YouTube things, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and thank you for watching.